<laughs> okay. Uh, good afternoon. This is Tom Katzenmeyer. I'm the CEO of the Greater Columbus Arts Council. I'm here to do an interview with Adam Hernandez, but before I start, I want to thank the Reese Brothers Productions, my good friends Jim and Michael Reese, and Nicolette Swift of Nicolette Cinemagraphics for producing this event for us this afternoon. Let me start by giving you a little bit of a bio on Adam. Adam is a self-taught visual artist originally from the Bronx. So of course, I'm going to ask him Yankees or Mets, and I think I know the answer to that question. He has exhibited work and painted murals across the United States and also internationally in Cape Town, South Africa. He's been featured in multiple publications and magazine, including Delta Sky Magazine, PBS.org, and he was named 2019 Best Artist in Columbus by Columbus Alive Magazine. You will recognize his work. It is very distinctive. He is known for his street art and his hieroglyphic inspired work from the land of Thunderbirds. And we're gonna certainly get into that. We're gonna have some fun uh, with this today. And he's done art and mural background work uh, across the region here, uh, installations at the Wexner Center for the Arts, the Kanzani Center at CCAD. He's done commissioned work. Uh, He's finishing up one right now at Condado Tacos in the Dayton area. So with that, we're going to go out to Adam Hernandez, who is in his backyard in Victorian Village today. Adam, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing fine, Tom. How are you? <laughs> it's great. So um, you might have heard me in the introduction. We can have some fun with this. So Yankees or Mets? Definitely the Yankees. I knew I'm going to go. Gonna... I'm going to get rid of that. Now. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I knew you were going to say that. So yeah. uh, you may know that I'm a huge uh, Indians fan. So we're going to have a little bit of rivalry there. From time. Yeah, yeah. Not too bad, though. It's okay. All right. uh, so I really am proud to call you a good friend, too. So we randomly met. We happenstance met. It was probably five or six years ago. What yeah. were we doing? How did that happen? It, <laughs> it was when uh, Kroger was was the kind of revamping a bunch of their stores, doing the Kroger, um, like the big marketplace stores, and the one on Morse Road was, it was the ribbon cutting. I think uh, Mayor Ginther was there also, yeah. actually. So I was selected. The GCAC and Kroger had selected some artists to create some murals for the some common area spaces at that Kroger, and that's we yeah, we met there. And I think I like gave you my business card, and I was like, hey, can we get coffee sometime? And yes. you've been a great mentor, and it really helped. So helped me get connected that. in the Columbus it's, art scene. It's so been fabulous for me. Mm -hmm. Trust me on that. Um, so I want to get into your background a little bit. You had great influence growing up in New York, which has really, uh, I think, determined the style and that you use. So I want you to. Talk, let's go in the way back machine and I want okay. you to talk about that a little bit. Well, I mean, obviously from New York, lots of graffiti. Graffiti is a big part of the culture, hip hop culture. I'm from the Bronx, um, obviously the Yankees, you know. So, um, yeah, just, just kind of was a commonplace thing for me. And it was a, always interesting. I remember being a little kid and always thinking it was so cool to like look up like on these tall buildings and seeing like how did they get up there to paint those mural pieces and stuff like that and also my family is very artistic my grandpa was an oil painter so i remember being a little kid and he uh i had like a spider-man coloring book and he taught me how to blend colors with crayons and that kind of blew my mind and i was like you can manipulate these things to create different images and so yeah that and that was kind of like my early childhood influence and as i've gotten older and and why I've, this particular style how did this style come into your head? Well, um, I've also always been like have really loved hieroglyphic art, specifically of like the Maya and Aztec. And something that I discovered later in life was that the uh, this will make sense in a second. Like the uh, Maya and Aztec, they had like a glyphic script. So instead of how we have the letters that com combine to make words, they were using pictures to create things. And I thought that that was like a really cool concept, kind of like graffiti artists. They would manipulate different their names and use different imagery colors to say their own names i kind of found this correlation between graffiti artists and mayan and aztec uh hieroglyphics and i was like wow i can kind of combine those two things and make it my own so i'm kind of say that like i create modern hieroglyphics with the influence of both 
tell my own mythology, if you will. That's great. So yeah. tell us a little bit about what that is behind you in your backyard. Oh, uh, that's a four-eyed owl. I thought it would be funny to start out with the owl on the poster board and then have the same owl pop up behind me. But that's kind of that's my practice wall. It's in my backyard. In between jobs or if I'm working on a different technique or something, it's nice to have a little wall to practice some stuff on and uh, you just stay sharp and keep my skills up. And is that going to go somewhere or are you going to paint over it and paint on it again? Uh, I'll probably paint over and paint on That's probably been painted over 30, 40 times, honestly. paint over that work of art? Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I'll let, it, I'll let it live. I'll take some pictures, you know, for the okay. grant and all that. All right. But... <laughs> as long as you let it live in some yeah. photography. Yeah. Uh, you curiously have uh, some artwork on some beer cans. Yes. I want to hear and, uh, the story about how that came about. Well, um... I'm a big, uh, I like, I like a good craft beer, especially like the local <laughs> ones. Um, I love Jackie O's also. I was drinking one of their like limited release beers probably about a year ago now. And I saw that the, uh, that the, it was like the different artwork and I looked on the label and it had a guy's Instagram. So I went to his Instagram and I was like, Oh, is this like a artist just like me? So it kind of inspired me to reach out to a bunch of breweries. I probably emailed on a cold call, probably 30 breweries. Most of them just kind of blew me off. Some said we have somebody, but Jack Eels actually got back to me and they were like, hey, thanks for reaching out. We're actually putting out a new line of beers. We're looking for a new artist to bring something fresh and funky. And I got to, I drove down to Athens, got a tour of the brewery, got to meet their uh, brewmasters, the owner. Wow. They're all really awesome company, uh, really cool, cool people. Yeah. And they, we just have started a relationship since then. So I actually have one of them. Oh, you just happen to have one there. Yeah, okay. it just happened, you know. I might crack it open while we're talking. You okay, know? <laughs> you're allowed to do that. It's All a right. nice uh, Tuesday afternoon. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool. I want your life, man. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a third beer can coming out. So you're mm -hmm. on two now, and there's a third one coming out. Yep. And you've done some work for Jack Daniels, too? Yeah. Um, I did something with them when it was uh, Rock on the Range over at the uh, Matt Free. Um, I did like a live painting mural for them. They had like a little uh, kind of distillery on the road kind of thing to teach people how they make their whiskey. And they had me doing some live painting. And I kind of built a relationship with some of their uh, reps through that. And they've brought me out to different bars around the city. And I painted some murals for them. So, well, that's yeah. great. Yeah. You also turned me on to something. Uh, we were, my wife and I were going to Miami. And mm -hmm. you said, you got to go to Wynwood Walls. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and I'm said to you, like, what is Wynwood Walls? Tell me about this. Tell me about what this is like, because we went there and we were absolutely astounded by it. And you're familiar with these kinds of places all over the United States and in other parts of the world, too. So I want our audience to hear about this and if there's some possibility of doing something like this in Columbus. Yeah, I, we've talked about this many times. Like, I think it would be neat, to, like really awesome to bring something like this to Columbus. Um, Wynwood Walls is probably like the premier place like this. But for folks who aren't familiar with it, it's a, a curated street art gallery, if you will, almost like a museum of street art, where some of the I would some of the top street artists in the world all have permanent murals. And it was in a kind of a defunct part of the city. Has been revitalized. They brought in a lot of businesses, restaurants, art galleries, that sort of thing. And to uh, bring some life to the neighborhood, they just have had these artists come out and paint murals. So it's like a, it's a sh mural district, for lack of a better word. One of my favorite artists, or uh, muralists, personally, is Tristan Eaton. He has a bunch of murals in New York City as well. He has a huge mural that celebrates uh, women in uh, Wynwood Walls. It's a really cool one. So, yeah. <laughs> That's great. And uh, you've been, obviously, around the world, but specifically, more recently, uh, you did a piece in Cape Town, South Africa. Mm -hmm. So how did that come about and what was the story behind that? Well, um, my wife actually studied abroad in Cape Town when she was in college. So it's a city that means a lot to her. And we were uh, planning on visiting it and kind of making an art trip out of it. And so I was able to go and I got to go to some schools and talk to some kids about art down there. And I met up with some artists and they had a version not as epic as when we by any means but kind of more for local artists it was a graffiti park where anybody could go and paint murals i had the opportunity to meet some artists out there and uh paint i actually painted two little murals there um i'm curious if they're still there or not they probably gotten painted over by now but <laughs> that was a really fun experience got to learn a lot about the culture and um just it's always fun meeting new artists that learn a lot and just have a good time that's so. great mm. that is great um 
as part of these programs, we present a trivia question. Mm -hmm. And Adam has come up with a trivia question. And the person who emails us or Facebooks us the correct answer will get a $25 gift card from North Star. And uh, I will tell you this trivia question is a little bit more difficult than the other no. trivia questions we've had. Okay. Uh, so Sorry. <laughs> give us your trivia question. Yes. Okay. Uh, what bird of prey has the largest wingspan? Okay. So the trivia question is what bird of prey has the largest wingspan? The uh, winner of that answering that question will get a $25 gift card to North Star. So we'll see if we have one either by the end of the show or we'll announce the winner on the next show. Uh, which is going to be on Thursday. So I wanted to um, talk to you about the pandemic and working as an artist in mm -hmm. the pandemic. And I um, happened to come to a show that you had at the Lindsay Gallery. Um, actually, my whole family was out that night with you and it was a mob scene. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be the weekend of sort of the start of the Arnold, which ended up getting canceled. So you sort of got a show in right under the wire before we yeah. had the quarantine here back in March. It was just a wonderful event to be at. But so for the last two months, uh, things have been shut down here. And I just want you to talk about what that's like for an artist to have that happen to them and if it's uh, affected your work or influenced you in any way. I mean, it's been, as I'm sure most people, it's been a big roller coaster. There have been some great moments and bad moments. I've tried to, ch to dwell on the positive that it's come from it. Um, but there's also been some, I guess, whack stuff, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But just, I mean, definitely mean? Tell whack. Me what that, yeah, tell me what that means. Oh, it's like just a slang for lame or not cool, you know, it's whack. <laughs> Things that were a surprise, like a negative surprise, you mean? Uh, not really a surprise, just like something's like really just bad, just it's whack, man. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry that's happened to you. Yes. No, it's, I mean, it, but I mean, it, but it's been good. Like you mentioned, I was able to do the, have been able to do the stuff down in Condado, which to be honest, at first was a little weird just because it was like, we had been at home, you know, following the social distancing protocol. And then to go to a job site, I was definitely a little hesitant at first, but I was actually one of the project, or I am one of the project leads on that job. So I was able to work with Condado's art director. We kind of set up a protocol. So, you know, when artists are on site, they have to wear masks. We have sanitizer to wipe down all supplies and that sort of thing. So we just tried our best to just be as safe and sterile as we could while painting murals in a yeah. construction site, which has been kind of funny. But um, yeah, I mean, and then just some other stuff have, has been postponed or kind of left out in the ether that like when things get back to normal we'll reach back out to you so and i know a lot of other artists that's happened to um yeah. but yeah companies you mentioned like that you were going to go to uh england i think for some kind of a oh, yeah. event that that was the biggest, yeah, yeah that was probably the most the most whack thing okay. <laughs> um I'm gonna have to learn to talk like you. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I can teach you, man. I can teach you. All right. Um, all right. So, what, tell what me today's lesson. What happened? <laughs> yes, yes. Tell me what happened in England. What were you gonna do there? Well, um, there's a, you know, urban scrawl that we have here in Columbus. Yes. This this festival is called Upfest. It's like Bristol, England. It's their version of it. It's actually the largest street art festival in in Europe. It attracts fifty thousand. Uh, uh, visitors. There's 300 artists that are featured. Um, and I was selected to be one of them. I've applied like the last four years. And this is the first year that I got accepted, which is a big deal. They bring in artists all over the world. I was super excited. It was going to be just a great opportunity to paint in front of a completely different audience. I was going to meet a ton of other, like kind of internationally renowned artists. I was like super stoked. And then of course COVID hits. So, um, they postponed it, but there's no set date. So, just kind of mm -hmm. hoping that maybe sometime later in the calendar year or next year, I'll be able to participate. But yeah, that's been one of the more, uh, I guess, sad things that's happened that I've been really bummed out about. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully they'll get that back on. Yeah. Um, what are you painting at Condado? Um, so it's really weird when I just say it out of context. I'm creating <laughs> a, la a lab scene of a mad scientist creating a mutant taco. 
<laughs> the reason being is because uh, Dayton is actually known for having a ton of patents. Tons of inventions were created there. Things, for example, like the parachutes, the ejector seats, the ice cube tray, the step ladder, just to name a few things. Right. Um, so what we decided and what Condado does is from each city that they go to, they try to be thematic to the area. So um, one of the themes that we decided to go with for Dayton was invention. So different artists are doing different takes on that. So my wall, I have Charles Kettering, the famous uh, yeah. doctor and inventor as a mad scientist, um, being uh, creating an ultimate taco in his lab. So and it's just like taco with like green slime coming out of it and multiple <laughs> eyes and being all wild. But Adam, that is reason enough to drive to Dayton. <laughs> oh, to see some that. of the, some of the murals there. I mean, not some. Oh, they're top notch. We got. I truly believe we got Dayton's finest. Like. It's been really awesome. The team came together and worked together really well. So it's a lot of fun. Have you done other condados? <laughs> yeah, I did one in Indianapolis uh, last year. And then my the first one I did was in Dublin uh, at Bridge Park, that location. Okay. Which a the theme at that one is like a medieval fairy tale. So I have some some wacky characters as, as knights and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> We're going to come back to that, but we're going to. Okay. Uh, we need to give your trivia question one more time. Okay. Say it one more time. What bird of prey has the largest wingspan? I almost said the answer as I was saying it. <laughs> Just in case you didn't hear that one, what okay, bird of prey yeah. has the largest wingspan? Okay, we got that. Right. Um, where else can we see your work in Columbus? So, Condado, Dublin. Yep. Um. The I know basement. at the oh. a &R, is it at the A&R bar? It's the or? venue below the A&R bar, the basement. Okay. Um, I have some murals in there. Um, I have a mural on High Street on campus um, on High and 13th. That one kind of actually plays with the graffiti influence a lot. Uh, I kind of built up a layer of a wall. It looks like a graffiti wall, but all the different tags on it are different streets of campus. So it kind of celebrates the community. And um, so that was a fun one. I got to work with the university district organization on that. Um, I'm trying to think where else in Columbus. Uh, putting me on the spot. What's, the biggest, <laughs> what's the biggest challenge about murals? I know you had a difficult situation um, trying to convince somebody to pay you to do a mural on their nice brick wall. Yeah. <laughs> but what, what do you run into when you're when you're out there uh, looking I mean, for I a think... canvas? I think one of the things we educate that, people with this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that artists need to be fairly compensated. I think a lot of people are kind of surprised at how much it costs. And it's not that artists are being greedy. It takes a lot of work and skill and time to do that. And just the supplies also to buy the paint to cover a big wall like that, to properly prepare it. Um, so I think I, for me personally, I charge a square footage price. I think different artists do it different ways, but that's the way I do it. And it keeps it fair. So I can just be honest and open with my clients. Like, I charge X amount of dollars for square footage and kind of work it out that way. Um, I guess from the technical side of actually painting the murals, the hardest thing is actually getting your image on the wall. There's a lot of different techniques to do it. So, um, I mean, cause like you might be able to do a sketch and it looks really pretty on a piece of paper, but now do that a hundred feet wide, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and just as time has gone on, I've learned a lot of different techniques. Like the That's average person fun. would have no <laughs> idea how to do that. Like, yeah. I don't have any idea how <laughs> you can possibly do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you laying on your back? Or are you, like, what are you doing? Like, you're uh, on I mean, a depends. lift, I'm assuming? Yeah, it, 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 I mean, it, it, it kind of varies from wall to wall. And that, that's actually one of my favorite things about it is that each wall is different, you know, whether you're painting on brick or cinder block or if it's an indoor mural on drywall, those are super easy. I love painting on those. So, um, but yeah, and you just kind of, I mean, one thing, uh, the easiest way to get an image up there is kind of just have a projector, but sometimes you can't always do that because you're outside, you don't have a source of right. power. Then there's something called a pouncing technique, which sign painters use. If you take a piece of paper that has the image on it and you put tiny little holes in it, so you light it up on, on your wall and you can like slap some chalk dust on it so it transfers the image over that way. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's yeah, a super old you. school way of doing that. Yeah. Um, and I've had to use that a couple times. So yeah, there's just different ways. Do you have any murals anywhere in the world in places where they shouldn't be? <laughs> I might have one or two. <laughs> I mean, I and honestly, that's kind of why I have the backyard wall, so I don't get okay. in trouble painting out in the streets anymore, you know? <laughs> okay. right. 
Uh, well, this has been uh, delightful. Um, oh, that our talking, time already? Ta- yeah, we're 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 kind of running out of time here. Oh, wow. I want to just ask about <laughs> what's next for you. Um, so you're going to be done with the cantato job. We all got to go over there. Yeah, we're wrapping up this out. week. Yep. Um, then uh, I have some like I have another can coming out with Jackie O's here soon. Um, we're plugging all these places. Jackie yeah. Rose, hey, Rose, we got to, man. We got to keep these Daniels. local businesses going. We got to yes. keep these local businesses going. You know, I guess Jack Daniels is pretty big, but <laughs> Jack Yos and Condado, they're, they're Ohio companies, man. We got to yeah. yeah. share the love. But um, yeah, I guess that stuff's big. Um, I have some uh, just like personal commissions for some folks. Um, actually, this is kind of fun. I don't know how much info I can give away on this, but you're the next guest on the show that you're interviewing, my friend Kaylee Featherstone. She's coming out with an album, and I'm going to be helping her with a music video. I'm going to be creating an animation. So oh. that's a big project I'll be working on over the summer, which I'm that excited about. That is awesome, and we'll ask um, her about that. Yeah, we'll ask her about that. Yeah, um, yeah, and just hoping that things kind of return to normalcy here soon, because some of those jobs I had lined up, hopefully they'll kind of work out. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's some other ones, uh, any other fun stuff. Oh yeah, you mentioned before I have some uh, some uh, prints and T-shirts that I'll be releasing. Yes, here in June, which I'm pretty excited about. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but yeah. That's great. Yeah. As we <laughs> conclude, I want to tell everyone: make sure you follow Adam on Instagram, which I just did right before we started filming, and also on ahernandezart.com. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, like he said, he's got some new prints and shirts uh, coming out in June. So check it out. It's a gift to giving time for Father's Day. Thanks. Hey. It's all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> thank you for doing this with us. Yeah, it's thanks been for great having to me. get to know yeah. you a little bit better. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I wish you well. And I hope the thing in England gets rescheduled for you. Thank you. I appreciate you know, that. I want to really do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll see you. All right. See you, Tom. Bye. Bye.